Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to spend some time looking at Calculate Linux. Uh, this is a Linux distribution that uh, is a installer uh, for Gentoo out of uh, Russia. And it was recommended to look at this as uh, I've been told that it runs Plasma pretty well. And Plasma is one of the desktops that I like. And so I wanted to have a look at it. And uh, I've already installed it and had a look at it. And uh, I'm not overly impressed. Uh, with a few things, and uh, you may have already seen that video. I'm not sure which one of these two videos I'm going to release first. Uh, maybe I'll do the installation, and then I'll do the other one later. Um, but we are going to walk through the installation process of this uh, of this guy here today. And so what we're going to do is, um, first is uh, we'll have a quick look at the VirtualBox, and uh, I'm going to be testing this out on a VirtualBox. Like I said, I have installed it, so... Uh, I've already seen what we're doing. Now, the one thing I needed to do is I needed to give this a much larger disk. I usually keep only 20 or, uh, in fact, yeah, 20 gigabyte hard disks in my virtual boxes. Well, Windows is 32 because, yeah, Windows <clears throat> disk hog. Um, but <laughs> Calculate was even more of a disk hog. It needed at least 35 gigabytes. And so I gave it a, uh, I gave it a new virtual disk, gave it 40 gigabytes. And I'm not sure exactly how much it's using of that, but nevertheless, uh, we put the uh, I put the ISO in the optical drive, and uh, Calculate does have a few different options here. I went with the this is of course the Calculate Linux desktop, meaning the desktop for just the basic home user. And there are a variety of different desktop environments. I am running Plasma. There's also Cinnamon uh, LXQT, I think. Um, uh, XFCE and uh, there's one more that's escaping me right now. I think it's Mate maybe. And so um, what we're going to do is start up the machine and we are going to get into our installation process. So first it wants us to pick our locality. So I'm going to pick with English and then boot into the live disk. Now it is going to boot right into the live CD and it is not full screen. I don't necessarily think we need it full screen um, to run the installer. In fact, I ran it without. Uh, so we'll just probably just run through it with this. So I'll be back when the distro is loaded. Okay, so we are on to the desktop and uh, let's just jump on over and uh, let's find our display settings if we can and just Go ahead and make this full screen if that's a possibility. Alrighty. So onto our build over here. Let's just go ahead and run the installer. So of course, uh, this is kind of like your default plasma. So single click to open things. You can see that it is uh, attempting to run the installer, I think. There it is. So we have a nice installer here. So the first thing is we need to come in and select our locality and our English. Um, I am up in New York time, so I'll go ahead and do that. We do have some advanced options here. I don't remember if I've actually, okay, keyboard layouts, hardware clock type, whatever. We don't need to worry about any of those. So let's we'll go ahead and skip. If you do have a different keyboard, uh, it does seem to detect my basic keyboard. So uh, that's the case. The installation image, um, just leave this alone. This is pulling it from the ISO that we are loading from. And we're going to go ahead and click our next. Now this one here, um, it, we have the option to use current partitions or to erase the disk and install calculate. Hopefully this does a good job of erasing. I did not actually have to mess with any of this stuff uh, to get the installation working on a blank new disk. I'm not sure what the result is going to be. Um, over on our uh, on this one here. The only error it threw is when it was too small. So this here, this is what it's proposing. And uh, so we have a home, we have, so it looks like it is giving us maybe a, uh, no, it doesn't actually look like it's a separate partition for that. So everything looks good there. And migrate network settings. So migrate network settings is just going to take whatever the network settings that were automatically detected and move those over. Otherwise I can manually configure it. Um, the reasons you might manually configure it is if you're installing this, um, but you are installing it and you're going to be putting it somewhere else, you might need to manually configure it. But in this case here, we don't since we're just doing, doing this on the same exact machine. So let's we'll click next. All right, so now we have uh, the root passwords, and this is where we got 
uh, this is kind of where we got a little bit of goofiness going in where you're going to want to make some changes. So first we have our root password. I'm going to go ahead and use calculate. Oh, I'm not supposed to tell you my password, am I? It's super secure. Now the first thing that kind of threw me for a loop the first time is it only shows like three characters here. So I'm like, did it not enter the password right? It does. Don't worry, it does. It only shows you those three characters. Uh, maybe that's a security feature so someone can't see how many characters are in your password just to indicate that yes, something is there. It is the correct thing. It is not, uh, it is not going to um, you know, cut down to three characters. Now, the other thing it does is it gives you one guest user with full access. What? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I don't need the guest. We are going to create a new user. I'm going to call him calculate. Um, we have, we can do system update or we can do full access. I'm going to give him full access. Now it by default does not assign groups. Uh, and that's going to be one of the things that you are going to want to assign. So I'm going to go through and put in some of the basic groups that you would encounter in a um, uh, in a system here. No, this way. Okay, looking for LP admin, and then we need. see my Samba share. So hopefully that doesn't interfere with our network. So these are basic ones. So sudo is going to allow us to be able to make, uh, you know, administration changes to the system. That's kind of the most important one. And the other ones were related to some other things. Now, um, do calculate and calculate. Apparently I, oh man, I told you my password again. That's not good. All right, so now we have one user. If you want to add any other users, you can do that. And I, I kind of like this thing that it it gives you the ability to add extra users. This is actually the first uh, installation system that allowed me to create multiple different users. Here you can select auto logins, guests, anything like that, uh, which we don't really need to work with that. You can select your audio. I mean, do you want the uh, ALSA or do you want to just, you know, go and, you know, <clears throat> we're not going to use that word for Pulse Audio. It doesn't matter. Uh, pick whichever one you're, you uh, want to fight with the most. I mean, this is Gen 2, so you definitely want to pick Pulse Audio so you have the biggest fight possible on your hands. I mean, really. Uh, video driver, um, you can pick the type of video driver. So why might you pick something different? Well, if you're installing this without your video card and then you want to add your NVIDIA <laughs> video card, you can do that. I do have a Radeon in this. I'm just going to do auto detect, though. It seemed to work for me. And then screen resolution, I'm going to go ahead and set that. Now, why do you set all these things and you don't generally see these in, in other distros? Well, one of the main things about, about um, Gen 2 is that um, it is it kind of installs like Windows does, where it only installs the things that you need to run the system. So it's good in that it streamlines the system down. You don't have excess code. It's bad in that it is no longer a portable Linux like most other Linux distros are. If I take nearly any other Linux distro and I install it on one computer, I can take that disk out, put it on any other hardware, and it will boot just fine under most circumstances. Maybe some tweaks here and there, particularly if you have you know a custom driver installed or something, you're going to have to mess with that. Gentoo does not do that. Now, it is a major advantage, which is why Chromebooks run Gentoo, is because it's very specific to the hardware. The downside is if the computer crashes and burns any other system, I can literally pull out the disk, replace the hardware, put the disk back in, go and not think twice about it. With this, I'd have to make a lot of adjustments to the disk or maybe wipe the thing and rebuild it. All right, so this screen here, uh, we can automatically check for updates or disable that. I love that option to turn that off. Then we can check daily, 24 hours, every six hours, etc. Once again, turning that off should probably get rid of that. Uh, we can automatically clean obsolete programs, update overla um, overlays. Go ahead and do that. And then we have a system install. So we can view all of the options that we selected here and then run the install. So that's really it. Uh, the only screen to uh, that really should give you any real issues uh, is our screen for 
uh, is our screen for running our um, our users. That one is a little bit weird and a little bit unintuitive with the uh, with showing you only three dots there for the password. Um, that did throw me a loop for the first time. And then secondly is the ability to add the users. You want to just clear out the guest one if you don't need that, and then add um, add whatever users. And you can then add pick and add the groups as you go, which is a really neat feature. So as far as the update uh, or the uh, installation process, excuse me, I really like the system. It's uh, it installs very nicely. And then when this is done doing its installation thing, then it's good. It's going to be a very nice system. It's uh, it's going to work out of the box. And uh, Gen 2, as long as you can get it working, mm, sometimes can be pretty stable. Now, some people have said that uh, many Gen 2 installs an update could break it, and that's, I don't know for sure. Um, I haven't run it long enough on any particular distro um, that, uh, that I've tried. Now, the only one that I have used um, for any slight length of time would have been Sabayan Linux, which I, even that I didn't run for long. Um, but I liked it, so uh, I want to go ahead and give this a try, just see how it looks. And uh, there is uh, one issue that I cannot seem to get resolved, and uh, that is I can't get several packages installed. Um, I wanted to run some updates, but the updater crashed. So what we're going to do here is when this guy is done with the installation process, then we're going to reboot it and we're going to look at the brief uh, updates so that you should always anytime you're running a distro go ahead and get all of the updates on the system before you really do anything else and then you'll be set to go and then hopefully that resolves the issue I was having but mm, never know so we'll go ahead and uh, come back to the video when this is done doing its instally thing all right, so it says it is uh, it says installed. It says, would you like to reboot your computer now to complete the installation? So we have yes, no, and break the process. I don't want to break anything. Let's just say no. Um, I'm going to close this. Yeah, sure. Close, please. Thank you. All right, now we'll go ahead and shut this guy down. And I don't know why, like Ubuntu is the only distro I know of that has the foresight to remove the ISO before install. The installers all ask, would you like to reboot the system now? Yes, and it doesn't kick the drive out. And so uh, Ubuntu at least has the foresight to kick the drive. So there we go. Now it's kicked. Now we will boot back into it. And then this will be our, uh, our um, calculate on the disk on the virtual machine. All right, so here we are on our desktop. So uh, we are ready to go. So our basic desktop here, we have a panel down here that auto hides. I think there's more things over here too, right? Yeah, no, oh, that's a terminal. <laughs> it looks like a more. <laughs> nope, it's a terminal, all right. Uh, so to run our system updates, we're gonna come on down here into settings and calculate Linux update. This is going to be our updater tool, and uh, we're going to have the option here to run our updates. And so we want to run this first. Let's see, search for the most appropriate update server. Yes, that's going to find a local mirror if applicable. Click our run, and it's going to it's going to take a little bit of time to get this guy running. So uh, be patient. It's probably going to need to download a lot of data depending on uh, when you know when the package was last refreshed. So we're going to give this a little bit of time and see what happens. All right. Well. Partway through running the updates, after about about a half an hour of trying to run the updates on that, the entire system crashed out again. So I'm just going to look at this and say, if you can get Calculate running, you have fun with it. Um, I'm not going to try and run it on my system. It keeps failing on all of the builds that I'm trying to do. So um, unfortunately, that's kind of the case. I'm not going to try and run it uh, at this point. Um, just too many issues, too many problems. And this channel is not dedicated to solving those problems. This channel is dedicated to showing you how you can get real work done in Linux. So that's kind of my thought. Uh, the installation works fine. I, I think if I uh, if I kept the mouse alive or whatever else, if I didn't go let it go into a system uh, suspend mode, it might have worked. I don't know, but two out of two times I tried running the installer, the installer crashed on, or the um, the updater crashed on me. So that's kind of my take. Um, calculate Linux. Um, Sure, give it a try. See if you can get it to work. Uh, if you can, that's great. It might be a great system. For me, there's just too many barriers and there's too many other Linux distros that actually work. So I'm not really going to be fighting with it um, to get it running. But uh, that's my initial thoughts. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. 
Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.